Yes, well, thanks very much for inviting me. It's a real privilege to speak to all the Sikhs at this huge gathering and to offer some thoughts about referendum 2020 from a legal perspective. I'm here with my fellow lawyers, Andrew Iannuzzi and Jamie Burton. And I should say from the outset that we're human rights lawyers we're not politicians, so we're not going to give rousing speeches about liberation. But what we can give is an overview of the law on self-determination and what that might mean to the Sikh people. Self-determination is the right of peoples to freely determine their political status, to freely pursue their economic and social and cultural development. It's at the forefront of some of the most important human rights treaties and documents. And it belongs to all peoples. There is no doubt that the Sikhs can claim to qualify as a peoples for the purpose of international law because they share the same language the same culture, the same religion, and the same ethnicity. So, in short, the Sikh peoples do have a right to self-determination. But what does that mean in practice? Well, it does not mean that any peoples can simply break away from their parent state when they're unhappy. International law encourages peoples to exercise self-determination within their own state. So the general rule is that people should try to pursue their development internally. But like all rules, there are exceptions. And international law recognizes three exceptions where peoples are allowed to break away from their parent state. The first exception is people who are colonized. The second is people who are, who are occupied and subjugated by a foreign power. And the third is where people have tried and tried everything they can to exercise their self-determination internally, but it's been blocked by the parent state. So how does that apply to the Sikh peoples? Well, when I mention referendum 2020 to my friends, they might say to me, why do the Sikh people want to break away from India, a large democratic country? And so I have to point out to them that the Sikh people had their own independent state before it was conquered by the British and handed over to the Indians. I point out to them that the Sikhs offered their support to India for the independent struggle against the British and they suffered disproportionately. And I point out to them that Nehru promised the Sikhs autonomy in the north of India. And finally I point out that all those promises of more autonomy for the Sikhs have been broken by the Indian government ever since. At that point, the colleagues and friends who I'm speaking to are less surprised and understand more about the Sikh movement, but they're still not convinced. They might say, yes, but that was 70 years ago. Surely the Sikhs today can make amends with India and stay within the country. And so then I point out to them a few more facts. I point out to them that the Indian constitution doesn't even recognize Sikhism as a distinct religion. I point out to them that the Indian government has ruined the economy in the Punjab by diverting the waterways, leaving people poor and destitute. And I point out to them that in 1984, 
the Indian government ordered an attack on the Sikhs' holiest temple that left hundreds or even thousands of innocent Sikhs dead. And I point out to them that in November 1984, Hindu mobs ravaged the country, killing and raping thousands of innocent Sikhs. And that was with the complicity of the Indian Congress party members and the Indian police. And finally, I point out that all the efforts that the Sikhs have made in the last decade to create a more autonomy within India have been met with persecution and violence. And once I've explained all those facts, then my friends understand completely why the Sikhs want an independent homeland and why the Sikhs want to control their own destiny. Many friends have said to me, how can anybody expect the Sikhs to live happily within India when the government and the police have committed, committed genocidal acts against them? So going back to international law, the key question for you, the Sikh people, at this stage is do you fall under any of the exceptions that would allow you to lawfully secede from India and create an independent state. And in my view, there is an arguable, a good arguable case that yes, you do. You fall under two of the exceptions. Firstly, because the independent Sikh state was conquered by the British in 1849 and it was handed over to the Indians. And ever since that, it has been subjugated, it has been dominated, and it has been exploited. And secondly, because the Sikhs have tried everything they can do to create their own internal self-determination within India, but has always been met with persecution and violence. So to conclude, the Sikhs deserve a chance to pursue their development as a people, free from intimidation, free from persecution, and free from violence. And if the only possible way to do that is by breaking away and creating a new state, then they have the international law on their side. And India, as the world's largest democracy, should have the wisdom and the maturity and the humility to sit down and negotiate an independent Khalistan. Thank you very much. Well,